Hi, this is Tim. In this video, we're going to show you how to wire an analog output from your Allen Bradley PowerFlex 525 to a digital readout. Now, in this case, we're using a digital readout. This actually would work with a PLC input also. Please take a moment to like this video and subscribe to our channel. We put out at least one automation video a week. And any questions that come up, feel free to ask them in the comments. Your question this week could easily be next week's automation topic. Picking up where we left off in our last PowerFlex video, so one, I'll put a link to it in the description if you need help getting to a particular place. But we have our PowerFlex drive wired for a three-wire control. We also have a reverse switch on it right here. And in the last video, we added a speed control by an external potentiometer. So we're gonna connect a wire to terminal 14 and 16. If you're coming from our external pot one, you're probably like, well, I already have a wire on terminal number 14. It's okay, go ahead and put a wire right beside of it. You can put it over here or you can put it over there. I'm gonna put it right here for everyone who hasn't been following along, but if you're wondering why I have a second wire on terminal 14, it is going to our potentiometer. But 14 is our analog common and that's shared with the analog inputs and the analog outputs. So when yours is done, ignore all these. These are from previous exercises, including that one wire under terminal 14 going to our potentiometer. Right now we have a wire connected to 14 and a wire connected to 16. Also, you'll need to pay attention to this jumper right here. Its default position is correct, which is the down position. That would be a voltage analog output. It would need to go to the top one for a milliamp output, and we'll go through that in a later video. So terminal 14, which is actually our common, we're not gonna connect it up here to our meter. We're gonna connect it to the common of our 24 volt power supply. So that will make it where our 24 volt and the 10 volt on the drive references will be the same, or their zero volt point will be the same. And the main reason we're doing it in this case is our analog gauge is powered by that 24 volt power supply and that's what it references its voltage to. So we'll connect it to the zero volt, which is the right set of terminal blocks. And then by default, our voltage input on our trainer actually has a jumper wire on it going over to the plus 24. And this is mainly just to let you know that you have power. We actually, we're gonna use this as a voltmeter in some later episodes too. But for now, we're going to pop this jumper wire off and just go ahead and set it aside. And then we are going to put terminal into that voltage terminal. That's the left one right here. Okay, and its default is the, spin it back around. Okay, and its default is the output frequency. So let's go ahead and power it up. Ouch, damn it. So let's go ahead and power it up. Okay, and at least still, it looks right because yeah, we're stopped. Let's press our start button. And we got nothing happening.
What did I do wrong? Fourteen. Fifteen. First, let's check it right here. Gosh, Tim, you got a mouse. We go from there to there. Press start button. Okay, we're going to have to edit in a spot on this. So somewhere I said 14 and 16. We'll have to redo that part. It is terminal 14 and... Okay, the default analog output is the output frequency. So let's go ahead and power it up and see what it does. Okay, so we'll press our green start button. All right, and our voltage is coming up. We're at about 28 hertz. In fact, let's bring this to about 30 hertz, and that should be right at about 5 volt, which is exactly what we have. Now, I'm going to turn it on up, and I apologize in advance for the noise on the mic. But just to show you, if we turn it wide open, we're going to end up at 10 volt, or the maximum output frequency. And let's bring it down, I don't know, somewhere down mainly in the range that you can hear now. And okay, we're running 8 hertz, and it's about 1.4 volts. So you could take this on to a PLC input or to, say, the command input of another drive. Actually, yeah, I need to put that on list. That would be a really good video where you have one drive commanding the speed to another drive. That's, that's actually a common thing I see, and yeah, I, I should do that. So I'll, I'm going to go put that on the list. All right, let's go ahead and hit the stop button. And let's talk about some of the other ways that you could configure this analog output. Because I told you the default is the output frequency or the drive speed, which is by far the most common thing you would have it on. But there are actually eight different set points that you can have it on for your voltage mode. Most useful, I think, would be it can do output voltage, it can do output amps, it can do kilowatts. Let's go ahead and do amps. So we're gonna go to parameter T088. So we'll press the escape key until we highlight that first letter and let's bring it up to a T. So this goes B, P, and then T. Hit enter and then let's bring it up to 88. And then its default is zero. And if you just wait a second, if you're not sure what it is, it says right there, output frequency, zero to 10. Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit enter and we're gonna bring it up to one. And even before you select it, if you're a little hesitant, just let it sit there a second. It says one, output current, zero to 10 volts. So that's exactly what we want. We're gonna go ahead now and start our drive again. And then you see we, we get 0.5 volt. Now that's 0.5 of its maximum amps. So doing the math, that means that it is 5% of its maximum amps. And if we turn up our speed, it's gonna come up some. Now we're not gonna nearly push it with this fan. Again, I apologize for the noise in the mic. It's saying 2.5 volt. Now that's not 2.5 of amps. That's actually now 23% of its rated output amp. So you would have to do the math on that. But so that can be really useful, say that, um, well, in this case, we have a fan. Maybe there's a filter in front of it. And the more it gets clogged, the amps change. That can be a really useful application. So I hope you liked this video. Please hit that like button if you did. And we're going through some really neat features of the PowerFlex 525 drive right now. So hit that subscribe button. Till next time. Hey, this is Tim. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if our videos have helped you make some money and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.